Hey everybody, it's Maggie Mulhern. I am here with Lauren McGowan, the International Creative Director for Evo. And we were just having a little chit chat about um, maintaining the health of the hair. And you said that there's one thing in particular that hairdressers are doing that they can just stop right away to help their client have style, shape, and texture while maintaining the condition of their hair. Wanna fill me in? Yes, so one, I have a really specific methodology with how I look at heat and work with heat. I think that globally we look at heat and hot tools like a necessary evil. Constantly talking to our clients about, stop doing this, stop blow drying, you're gonna damage it. Stop ironing your hair so much, you're gonna damage it. And I get asked all over the world by hairdressers, how do I get more hold in my curls? I do all this curl work, it drops out, I've gotta orbit my client's head with hairspray. How do I actually get my curls and texture and waves to hold? Hold is not what you want to look for. What you actually want to look for is shape memory. And that really comes from making sure you build the quality of the hair. We've been kind of raised on this diet of more heat, more hairspray. We turn the tools right up. We think that we're working super fast. We're going to be more efficient. But when you dry the hair to 100%, when you wet the hair down, you break down temporary salt and hydrogen bonds. And when you dry it again, they reform into whatever shape you put them in. But there's always a very core moisture and hydration in the center of the hair fiber. If you take too much water out of the hair, it doesn't matter how good you are and it doesn't matter how much product you use. If the hair is devoid of moisture, the cuticle will open up like a sunflower and attract water from the air around it. That is why naturally curly hair is the first hair type that reacts to the atmosphere. Every time the curl pattern bends, the cuticle is open, so it leaches moisture but it also attracts it. That is why if you've ever done a great haircut, blow dried and flat ironed it, put your comb through to check it and it statics out. Most people just think it's static electricity and it is but it means that you have removed so much moisture from the hair that you've created an environment for static electricity to exist in. Uh, same thing, people set for a dropout. They'll set the hair like a poodle and they want it to be a beach wave. You've got to go outside and test the wind speed, see how long it'll take to drop out. That's all called compromising your creative choices. We compromise and change the way we would like to work to work around the constraints of tools that are too hot. So with me with heat, I look at heat like a product. I use my wet products to fill in the gaps in the hair's health. If you fill the hair up with what it needs and you lock the cuticle down at an intelligent temperature, you create shape memory. It takes a lot longer for the hair to react to the atmosphere if it's already full of what it needs. And it's not that high temperatures are evil, they just become unnecessary. It's unnecessary to take that much water out of the hair when we spend so much time and hours spent over basins with treatments and products trying to put that quality in there in the first place. All right, so let's do a demo. You have your iron here, and we have the lovely Becky May, lovely who, Becky. who is always volunteering to be our model. <laughs> so, so temperature is super important. For versatility in how you style, every hairdresser has got a little box of five to seven looks they can do at any time with their eyes shut. They're really comfortable doing it. When you're busy in the salon, you always revert back to those things you can do well. The way that I work with heat to really expand that box of tricks up into a million options is if you want bigger, looser finishes, take bigger sections and turn your tools down. If you want tight, bouncy finishes, take smaller sections, turn them up. I never go over 370 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll show you why in one second. But the idea behind that, you want to evenly coat the hair with heat. You want to paint heat into the hair. Use it like a product. If you don't evenly apply heat to the hair the same way you want to evenly apply product, you are not going to get a consistent result. And when you are working fast and slow, it confuses your client and then they can't maintain their hair at home. So it's about bridging the gap as well. When you have creative control, bridging the gap between how you do their hair and how they do their hair at home, because that's the most important thing. All right, so is the hair prepped with anything? The only thing I've put on this, on Becky's hair, she's got really beautiful, healthy hair. I've just put on some Evo Day of Grace, which is a pre-style primer. I put it on every single head of hair I work on. Here's something Maggie prepared earlier. <laughs> But this is super, super lightweight. It's got UVA, UVB protection. It has proteins in it, moisturizers. It also has heat protection in it up to 415 degrees Fahrenheit, but is invisible in the hair. You cannot feel it. So it's just misted into the hair? Yeah, or it's you just misted in lightly. All I've done is gone in and just really gently, just a global application. Super, super light. It will balance the porosity of the hair really nicely. Go through, work it in. You can put a brush in it but the hair is already dry and it just gives you an even canvas from roots to tips. So I know when I move through with heat, I'm sealing in a very even porosity. Now, what I wanna show you, and I do this tip all the time, when I'm trying to explain to my clients the difference about temperature, that I just do two curls at the front, especially sensitized blondes who are just obsessed with too much heat and they redo their hair all the time. 
So this is 150 degrees Celsius, which is around 360 Fahrenheit. All I'm going to do is a really simple half turn, but I want you to watch what actually comes off the plates from a steam point of view. So a nice smooth pace. I'm coating the hair evenly. Just a half turn, you can see there's a little bit of water coming out. But you get a nice, tight, bouncy curl. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side and turn this up to high, which is 415 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is the same size section. I'm going to do the exact same technique, just a half turn in the hair, but I want you to look at what comes off the plates now. That is an excessive amount more of steam. Now, on Maggie's hair, that's just a little bit of water and some day of grace, but in a real world client situation, that is any kind of back bar treatment you've put in the hair, anything you've done to actually create a beautiful finish, that's literally coming out of her hair treatments, products, toners, before she's even had a chance to pay for it. It's going back into your air conditioning system. And if you have a look at the two curls, right now, this is a tighter curl. But if I pick both of these up, and creative control and shape memory means that before you get to product, you shouldn't be scared to do this. If you fill the hair up with what it needs, your foundation products, and lock the cuticle down, you shouldn't be scared to push it and work it. We've all had that client where you start to curl their hair and they start to play with it, and you're like, don't touch your own hair ever again. You're like, don't touch it. If your clients, if you're scared for your clients to touch their own hair before they leave the salon, what happens to their curl when they, when they walk out the door? So I'm trying to brush it, I'm trying to pull it out. So if I take this back now, I put this curl in, it's exactly the same, same shape, got heaps of bounce and life on it. If I look at this curl, can you see the difference in that this is now dropped it's also so much more compact on the hair. And especially through the very ends, it starts to get really, really dry. The more I touch this and play with it, the more it will drop out. Now, when I talk about shape memory, when you can leave life and moisture in the hair, you can see the difference in the amount of body that's actually on that second curl. But if you feel the gap in the gaps in the hair's health, you can actually, you should be able to put some extra mist on it. So if I actually go through and spray this down, and put a little bit of day of grace so it is damp. So two pumps. We're gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm gonna brush this out. As soon as you put water anywhere near it, what will happen is this cuticle is gonna keep opening up and it's gonna keep getting looser and looser. Brush this out. You can see as soon as you put any kind of water source near it, it will start to drop. So if we pick up this one now, do the same thing and really brush that product in. If I put this back into the curl it came out in, I haven't lost any of that body or shape. You still have all that bounce. You can see how much more compact this is, how it's splitting. So that's what shape memory is about. This is really about create, using your products to fill in the gaps in the hair cells, create a beautiful base. Use your heat intelligently to seal that in. You will be able to brush this up and down all day. So it lasts for you creatively, but it means it lasts a lot longer for her when she goes home. All right, so come over here. So for more information for Evo, evo.com yes so we've got lots of great content for hairdressers and consumers but www.evohair.com is our hub with everything you need to know okay and how do we follow you how do you follow me my instagram is at lauren mccowan m-c-c-o-w-a-n and you if you ever have any questions about style tips and tricks you can always send me a dm i get back to everyone Great, and thank you, Becky May. Becky's all set Thanks, to go out. Becky. Yeah. Big, big night on the town <laughs> now. With Becky's hair. <laughs>